And let's start with what is happening in France, where Yellow West protesters have brushed aside Emmanuel Macron's conciliatory speech made days ago as they've hit the streets for the 24th straight weekend. The several hundreds of demonstrators in the French capital of Paris and also in other cities, it is Strasbourg and Toulon. And protesters were in fact seen marching in Strasbourg in between calls for the French president's resignation. The protesters, in fact, are of the view that Emmanuel Macron had missed the opportunity to meet with the protesters and has failed to properly learn and address their demands. Now, almost a week after the Easter Sunday massacre, the threat continues to loom over Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan president has banned groups responsible for the attacks. The National Tawheed Jamaat and also the Jamaatul Militu Ibrahim have been banned and properties belonging to these two groups have been seized. Now, this development comes hours after the police conducted multiple raids across the country. The four people died and three others were injured as a giant construction crane collapsed in the United States. Seattle, five cars were also crushed in the accident and two victims of the incident were in the crane and two others were in separate vehicles. A four-month-old baby was also said to have been injured in the accident and has been rushed to a nearby hospital but no life-threatening injuries have been reported. The thousands of Orthodox Christians celebrated Easter's Holy Fire Ceremony at the Church of the Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The church is believed to have been built on the site of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and burial. The Holy Fire is considered a miracle that occurs every year on Holy Saturday, which is the day preceding the Orthodox Easter Sunday. At exactly at about 2 p.m., a sunbeam is believed to shine through the window of the ceiling of the church which then lights a lamp placed in the tomb. The Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem then lights a few candles with the holy fire and passes them to the worshippers inside of the church. The US Central Command Chief General Kenneth McKenzie has said that the US will deploy the necessary resources to counter any dangerous actions by Iran. Now, the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and also some military commanders had threatened to disrupt oil shipments from Gulf countries if Washington tried to strangle Tehran's oil exports. The tensions between Tehran and Washington have risen since the Trump administration withdrew from an international nuclear deal with Iran. And also earlier this month, the United States has blacklisted Iran's elite revolutionary guards. And Hamas's leader Ismail Haniyeh has called all Palestinian factions to unite against a peace plan proposed by the Trump administration Palestinians have called the undisclosed peace plan as the deal of the century and claim that it actually favours Israel and is not the deal of the century as Trump is making it out to be. But the White House is planning to release the details of the plan after the month of Ramazan and the White House, however, would not reveal whether the peace plan will endorse a two-state solution which, remember, is in fact a United Nations plan and whether the two states of Israel and Palestine will be brought into existence. And Chinese President Xi Jinping has met with the Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte who attended the second Belt and Road Forum for the International Cooperation in Beijing. China commends Italy's signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with China on jointly building the Belt and Road. Now, the two countries are ready to work together in advancing the Belt and Road Initiative and make the bilateral relations a model of Belt and Road cooperation between China and European countries. The Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has said that it is firmly committed to participating in the project. The South Korea has marked the first anniversary of the summit between the country's leader Moon Jae-in and North Korea's Kim Jong-un in the demilitarized zone. The hundreds of local and foreign guests gathered in the border village of Panmunjom where Moon met with Kim. A series of musical performances and other events highlighting the cross-border rapprochement were lined up to mark the anniversary. The political uncertainty grips Spain as the country is preparing to vote for its third general election in just four years on Sunday. Ballots are being prepared in Spain as opinion polls have predicted that no single party will get a majority. The competition is pitted against five main national parties and smaller parties from the autonomous regions of Catalonia and Basque. But the divisive polls also come amidst the rise of the far-right party Vox, 
the Catalonian separatist crisis and an economic slowdown in the country. The Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido has called on supporters to participate in what he's called the largest march in the history of the country. Juan Guaido has urged supporters to take to the streets on the 1st of May to pressurize President Nicolas Maduro to step down. Juan Guaido has invoked the constitution to assume an interim presidency on the basis that Maduro's 2018 election was illegitimate. Now, Juan Guaido has been recognized as the Venezuelan president by the United States and several other European nations. The Germany's Christian Democrat Union leader, Angret Kramp Karrenbauer, has begun her European election campaign. Speaking at the launch of the Union Party's European election campaign, Kramp Karen Bava took China as an example of social control and has said that a regime that tells people what to do should not become the standard in the world. The Kramp Karen Bava was elected as the new leader of the centre-right party in December 2018. The Sudan's opposition alliance and ruling military council has said that they were hopeful of a deal on the formation of a new body to lead the country's transition from 30 years of rule by Omar al-Bashir. The Sudan's transitional military council ousted and arrested the former Bashir, former Bashir on the 11th of April following months of protest. The defense ministry later announced that the military will rule for up to about two years ahead of elections, which will then transfer power to a civilian government. A state of emergency has been declared in Ottawa and Montreal as Canada braces for more floods. Water in the Ottawa River has reached close to the levels that it had reached in 2017. Canadian Public Safety Minister has said that it is a serious environmental, economic and public safety issue. The federal government has also deployed hundreds of soldiers to help with the relief efforts. Now, one person has been killed and three others injured after a man opened fire at the synagogue outside of San Diego. A man suspected to be the gunman has been arrested by the police. San Diego County Sheriff has identified the suspect as a 19-year-old man named John Ernest. He is presently being questioned by the homicide detectives. The investigators are also examining a manifesto that the gunman had left on social media along with other digital evidence. Now, Poe Mayor Steve Woz has characterized the shooting as a hate crime. He's also appreciated the efforts of the law enforcement agencies as well. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Russia plans to increase its transit potential following the growing trade turnover with China. Now, speaking to the media at the Belt and Road Forum in Beijing, Vladimir Putin said that no one would benefit from trade wars which cause damage to the world economy. The Russian President Vladimir Putin attended an Orthodox Easter Mass at Russia's main Christ the Saviour Cathedral in central Moscow. The Easter, which is one of the most important Christian festivals, symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Vladimir Putin joined the overnight vigil with Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev and also his wife Svetlana Medvedeva. The two 500-foot cooling towers in the last coal-fired power plant have been reduced to rubble within seconds in the United States, Massachusetts. The live video of the controlled demolition showed the giant towers along Mount Hope Bay implode. A large cloud of dust rose in the air and the plant had burnt coal since 1963. 
It was shut down in 2017 as environment activists had pushed for a cleaner source of energy. Now, the new owners of the property plan to turn the site into a multi-use facility that is dedicated to supporting offshore wind farms. PepsiCo has agreed to make an out-of-court settlement with Indian farmers who they had sued for cultivating a potato variety that the company in states that infringes on a patent that it has already acquired. Now, PepsiCo has submitted orally in the court that it warned the farmers to either give an undertaking and not use what is described as the FC5 potato variety or purchase seeds from the company and then sell the produce to them. The farmers will be informed about the settlement after which further action will be taken. The matter is expected to be heard next on the 12th of June.